What is going on, everyone? This is Keel Dyken. Welcome back to the channel. First off, Happy New Year. I definitely want to thank all the new subscribers and supporters that have joined here within the past few days. And then, of course, uh, over the course of the year, we've had a lot of interesting development. And without all the supporters and people uh, backing the channel, a lot of this stuff wouldn't co fully come to fruition. But uh, today's video, I want to give you guys an update in regards to what's going on with Raspberry Pi 5 uh, emulation and uh, development. Uh, so as of right now, we are we do have PlayStation 2 pretty much running at full speed for a lot of the games. Personally, I've tested about 460 that run well, and I will be uh, going over a full tutorial to show you guys how to get that fully set up here in the next few weeks. So in addition to that, I know a lot of people have been asking questions in regards to what front ends are currently running PlayStation 2 emulation. Uh, and right now it's only Supreme Ultra that I can 100% confirm. Uh, there are some notes in regards to Bata Sarah and a recall box. Not sure if recall box is going to add it. Um, I do know that Bata Sarah has been working on it. I think it was added then it wasn't working and then they're working on some other things. But as far as I know, uh, that is still a work in progress. Uh, the reason why I bring this up is because there's been some talks or conversations within the community. And it seems that, you know, no matter how many videos we upload, people still seem to think that it either doesn't work or they must be getting their information from somewhere else. But uh, obviously those of you who follow this channel and then also take a look at some of the raw footage that has been uploaded to Arcade Media and also follow some of my Facebook groups that I run, uh, then you are pretty much aware of the situation and that things are running pretty decently uh, as far as what I can say. I uh, came across a YouTube video. If you guys uh, follow Explaining com Computers, I love this guy's channel. He breaks down everything in regards to uh, single board computers. And one of the things that he showed off on his channel today was the Raspberry Pi 5 M.2 hat drive. This is a brand new unit that goes to the bottom of the Raspberry Pi 5. And this was a concern to me because I know Jeff Gearling did a video a few weeks ago or uh, actually a couple months ago, and the M.2 drive that he showcased goes on the top. And one of my recommendations is if you're gonna use an M.2 drive, it needs to be at the bottom so that way it doesn't interfere with a fan or heat sink or any type of possible airflow. So if you guys are interested in using an M.2 drive for your Raspberry Pi 5, particularly in regards to emulation, uh, with PlayStation 2 emulation specifically, I would suggest going with this particular model, the Raspberry Pi 5 M.2 hat drive that goes on the bottom. So that way you can still add all your qualified heat sinks and fans, which will give you the best cooling solution for your Raspberry Pi 5. I run mine the same way. I have the active cooler, then I have a fan on top of it. I'll do a video on my setup. I have probably some of the lowest temps you guys have seen on the Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi 5. My temps are about 28 degrees idle, and I've only gone up to about 53 degrees Celsius while overclocked at 3,000 on the CPU and 1,000 on the GPU, running PlayStation 2 emulation for at least eight hours. So some of you would have been getting maybe 85 degrees or so. So just imagine if I used the M.2 hat that went on the top, I wouldn't have been able to get the possible airflow to keep my unit cool as possible and uh, also preventing thermal throttling. Some additional news that we also want to cover is I know there's been some misinformation going on about images and PlayStation 2 emulation. So as of right now, the only team that I know that has PlayStation 2 emulation on the Raspberry Pi 5 running at a acceptable rate that runs pretty good is the Supreme team. So currently that image or the base image may be coming out here in the next week or two. Some things are still being tested. For those of you who have been some early adopters on my Patreon, you guys have had the pleasure to go ahead and download that. And then of course I issued a service warning saying, hey, uh, it's going to take some time for me to get together and do a full tutorial uh, explaining how to get the best possible emulation on it that is possible because there is a little bit of a learning curve to understanding Asterix. But for the most part, it does run full speed. I've gotten some games up to 120 frames per second, up to 144. Some run too fast, some run too slow, and then some aren't doable. So if you guys are patient... We'll cover that in detail, but for the most part, it does 
run pretty great and i've been happy with it i've been playing it and uh it is a little different than the orange pie in terms of setups but we will cover a lot of that information all right, so I was also provided with a list from the Batisera uh, beta testing for the Raspberry Pi 5, just to give you guys some insight as to what may uh, be going on. Um, I don't know if this is official list or if somebody put this together. If this was official, I would tell you, but uh, it, it is a, a, some type of record to give you guys a better understanding as to what's currently going on. So as of right now, you have games such as Mario Kart Wii, uh, semi-playable. They have a nice diagram everything's uh, kind of put out. Wish I had time to put out something like this uh, for PlayStation 2 emulation on the Raspberry Pi 5. But it gives you an overall idea about what games are fully supported, how things are fully running, or if they're not running at all. So for example, here it says either yes, semi, or, semi, or no. So semi means 70 to 89% speed, some graphical audio glitches. So it looks like they have a lot of games here on uh, the Wii, Dreamcast, and different systems that are either running full speed. Uh, Resident Evil 4 GameCube. Now, I haven't tested this out on Supreme Ultra for RetroPie uh, to see if this even works. So it looks like they have some issues there with Vulcan. But this is just a nice uh, little uh, spreadsheet here that kind of puts everything in perspective for you to give you an idea about what uh, you could possibly run. Been getting a lot of questions asking, is the Raspberry Pi 5 worth getting and yes it is um especially if you are going from the raspberry pi 4 4 gigabyte model to the raspberry pi 5 4 gigabyte model uh reason why i say that is that there's only a five dollar increase not factoring in the heat sinks or active cooler that you need to get but the raspberry pi 4 5 uh, the raspberry pi 4 4 gigabyte model is 55 dollars the Raspberry Pi 5 4 gigabyte model is $60. So it's only a $5 increase. Now, uh, the part that they, then may be questionable, which is my personal recommendation, if you're gonna get a Raspberry Pi 5 for emulation, then get the eight gigabyte model. However, that one starts at $80. And then of course you gotta get the active cooler for five bucks, uh, the required power supply, which is another 10. And then you start factoring in your own fans and heat sinks, and then you're easily at about a 117, almost $127, especially if you're gonna start adding in like the M.2 drives uh, and so forth for uh, your tinkering and your hobbies. So uh, it starts to kind of add up there, but uh, all in all, everything is going great. So let's kind of take a look at the rest of this uh, diagram here. Uh, we're not gonna take a look at 3DS. Uh, that should be playable, Daphne, Dreamcast, all these little minimal base systems. These are all things here that ran uh, perfectly fine for the most part on the Raspberry Pi 4. And uh, even if it didn't run through RetroPie, it would have ran better if you uh, on Android. So uh, none of those are particularly an issue. Uh, we have some GameCube here. Semi from Mario Kart. Model 3 runs exceptionally well. I've ran uh, Model 3... I think I ran Model 3 on Batisera. I, I'll have a video up on that as well, but it runs really good on RetroPie. And uh, the RetroPie version that I am speaking with is not an official build. I don't think the, I think they do have daily uploads or weekly uploads for the Raspberry Pi 5 base. I know a lot of people have been using that, but uh, Asterix emulator or Ether emulator hasn't really been fully integrated with that. So when I speak on RetroPie, I'm speaking from Supreme Ultra, which has all the latest emulators and optimizations uh, on there. Nintendo DS and PlayStation 2. So as of right now, uh, again, if this is the official one, then PlayStation 2 uh, hasn't been fully compatible. I know a few months ago, Lee PSP posted a video and nothing really launched from Batisera with PlayStation 2. I think they were using the PS, was it PS1 or PlayStation? Uh, I can't remember the actual name of it, but that particular emulator for Batisera and my personal opinion, uh, that's not optimized for single board computers. That particular emulator uses two cores. It does not even see the full entirely, full entirety of the board. So you're not gonna get the best possible solution using that emulator on a single board computer. Uh, that one is more geared to PC, which is why Asterix or Ether emulator, I'm sorry to say, uh, is the better of the emulators for PlayStation 2 if you're going to emulate 
because it uses four bit cores and uh, I know the project was disc discontinued, so it's not going to have additional support in terms of an actual core being fed into RetroPie for uh, RetroArc emulation. But it's all we got, and uh, I'm I'm happy with it. Took me a while to fully understand it for the Raspberry Pi Five, but uh, that will give you the best optimizations for PlayStation Two gaming on the Raspberry Pi Five. So uh, that's pretty much a lot of the updates going on right now. Just wanted to make this video, let you guys know we definitely appreciate all of the support. Uh, PlayStation 2 emulation is definitely running pretty good for the most part. I'm about 460 games in that all run at acceptable rates, if not you know faster than what they should be. I'm happy with it. So you guys should definitely be pleased with that. And again, I can't say this enough. If, if it was not for the Orange Pi 5 with the RK3588 chip and the Rock Pi 5, we would be months behind in development because uh, we added it to that. And then, of course, uh, we had other members in the community like uh, Pi Maniac who brought in, in, brought in his expertise in terms of how to emulate PlayStation 2 and get it uh, to run better on a single board computer going through some of the different settings and so forth. So uh, that's where we are. Just definitely wanted to kind of clear up some confusion for those of you wondering if it was available or if it's going to be possible. And please keep in mind too that we are community members. A lot of this stuff is our hobby for free is not personally guaranteed. I know some of you may be looking for the likes of let's say your V-Mans, your Wolfenoses and other people like the muscles or whatnot to put out an image, but please keep in mind that these are hobbyists. These are people doing this stuff on their own free time. There's nothing guaranteed. Nobody's guaranteed to put out anything. This is the stuff that we fully commit to, uh, for your enjoyment. And so I know a lot of times people will say, Hey, when, when is that retro pie image coming out? And there's sometimes that feeling of, uh, like there's like a requirement for it to come out where, it's just a freely uh, given hobby. So that's pretty much all what's going on right now. Uh, there are images ready. I think you'll probably start seeing some more images that are coming out within maybe midway to January, probably closer to February. And then I can't speak of some of the other teams like Recal Box or Batacera, uh in terms of what they may have coming out. Uh, I can't really speak on that. But uh, for the most part, things are, you know, moving ahead in a, I would say in a, in a good direction and some things just won't get any better. Uh, they're just going to be, you know, what they are because of, you know, device limitations and so forth. But, uh, for the most part, as of right now, I'm really impressed with how the, the optimizations have been on the Raspberry Pi five, especially considering that the orange Pi five is a 3588 chip is a much more powerful board. In fact, you will get, as of right this very moment, you will get better Nintendo Wii and GameCube emulation on the Raspberry Pi 5 uh, compared to the Orange Pi 5. It's much better on the Raspberry Pi 5 compared to the Orange Pi 5. And that's only because of the additional driver updates and video updates that they keep adding. Sometimes there's like 50 freaking updates a day. And I know we've, Release the beta image. If you guys have subscribed to my Patreon, you guys have that, but there's even more updates coming down the pipeline. So it would have been really nice to see what type of driver availabilities would have been for the Orange Pi 5, but that community doesn't get that type of support or even the Rock Pi 5 doesn't get the kind of support as the Raspberry Pi uh, community. So uh, if you guys have any questions, please like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. Wanted to get this video out, thanking everybody for 2023 as we go into 2024. Uh, we have some more developments that will be coming. Please just be patient. Again, we're free community members just trying to help out and have fun in that type of regard. And uh, this is going to just be uh, really interesting. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. You guys all have a great, happy new year. Be safe out there. I will catch you later. Got some more videos coming up for you to keep you guys entertained and informed about what's going on here. You guys have fun out there. Peace out.